Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, supportive vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today we are going to check up on the frozen versus fresh food experiment. The idea behind this is that the plant cell wall burst when frozen, and that will start the breakdown process, releasing moisture. It should speed up the decomposition, especially since we know that the bin critters, like microbes and worms, all love an increase in moisture in their environment. The top layer is our harvest layer. The last feeding was a handful of alfalfa meal. I'm just going to pick off any little pieces of plastic that have been pushed up to the top here. And then we're going to take a look and see if this is ready to harvest and go put on blue. Now it is 78.2 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement and 65% humidity. So honestly, that is not the best recipe for getting your, your bins to uh, dry out, honestly, at all. So I'm going to do a little bit of this aggravation method, but I think we can absolutely harvest this today and go put it on blue then we can start a new tray. All right, so I'm gonna give this a little bit of time here for all these worms to dive down, and then we will come back and harvest this and check in on the feeding tray. Okay, there we go, it's been about 10 minutes, and you can see I still have a few more stragglers there, but these castings look great, and soon as they dry out on top of blue, I'll be able to sift them and use them for my bonsais and my garden. All right, let's pull this away and on to the next layer. Here we are at the feeding layer and I did ask the worms if they wouldn't mind picking that plastic out for me and it looks like they've done a good job. So I'm gonna start by just grabbing this. That is super frustrating. I bet the entire lifespan of this layer is honestly just going to be me picking out plastic. I am probably just not going to take donations of shredded paper anymore, so if people want to give me cardboard that I shred myself, that'll be one thing, but I'm not going to take shredded office paper again. Now, the side that was the frozen side has the plant tag on it, so let's... Ugh, still more. Let's see if we can find a plant tag. Oop, there it is. Okay, so this is the frozen side. Let's see what's left. I will put a picture of, of what was there previously. This was a whole apple. And you can see they're getting into the skin here. But that that apple, even though it was frozen, uh, has not been consumed yet. And if you do a compare and contrast, this is the whole apple that was not frozen, and it is still solid. It is nowhere near getting done. So let's see if there is a, a backup to our plan where possibly we will find those cut up pieces of apple. And I'm not seeing anything of the cut up apple on this frozen side. So let's look on this side to see if there is any of the non-frozen apple chunks. So I'm seeing a, a skin there, maybe another skin there. I'm telling you, I think there's so much plastic in here that when I do harvest this, I'm going to do a water harvest and rinse away all the castings and throw away the rest. Not the worms, but you know what I mean. Uh, there, There's just, it is so pervasive in this that it's just, I just don't think it, even the worms aren't going to be able to pick all this out. This is going to become the future harvest tray. But I think the, um, the results are clear. This is nowhere near being done and I'm willing to bet in, you know, maybe another week or so, this will be completely gone. And this will probably still not look a whole lot different in a couple of weeks. There is the, uh, the experiment on fresh versus frozen. And then also, kind of as a side bonus, you're seeing the difference between when you cut your food up and you leave it whole.
the worms were able to completely devour fresh and frozen apples, but not the whole ones. So that, that's a good one. That's a good, I think we learned something there. And I think some people are like, why do you do these experiments? Why does it matter? Um, the reason it matters is it's important for you and your worm farm to do these on your own as well. Not just me here on YouTube, but you, just the regular worm farmer sitting out there watching me play with the worms. It's important for you to do this too in your worm bin, especially when you're new, so that you can kind of get an idea as to how long do things take to be decomposed in your worm bin. It won't be the same for everybody. The temperature, how big the worm bin is, how many worms you have, the kind of food that you uh, feed, it is all important that you learn through trials how long it takes in your worm bin. It won't be the same as what I have here. I'm gonna put this aside. This will be our pre-harvest tray, so we're not going to feed any more people food. I will give it some chow here at the end. Let's look at what's going to become our feeding tray today. This tray has never had any people scraps, kitchen scraps, whatever you want to call them. And look at all these castings. Isn't that awesome? All by theirself, with no people food, no worm chow, just shredded cardboard. And they are rock stars. Red wigglers really are a very, very versatile worm. Even though it's been very, very hot here, they are still rocking it. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So this will definitely become finished very quickly, especially in this heat, for the next time. Let's get the next layer down. This is the layer that was the second oldest inoculating tray. This has also not had any people scraps, and it has not had any worm chow. It is still doing pretty darn good, and look there. We've got an adult worm down here that is probably hiding from the kids. All well, the kids are up roaming with the food and the worm chow, and sometimes the larger adults come down here to have some peace and quiet and uh, some parent time. All right, let's look at the next layer down. This is what we started last time. This is the brand new inoculating bin. And it also has worms down here. And they are, you know, making castings like worms do. On this layer down here, what I am planning on doing is I'm starting a new experiment. And that is going to be how long does it take an avocado pit to degrade. And so we're actually going to start that experiment in the brand new inoculating tray that I'm going to make today. That way it has the longest period of time in order to break down. I think it's about six months. Put in the comments below, how long do you think it's going to take an avocado pit to turn into mush? Put that in the comments below. All right, here we go with the brand new inoc inoculating tray. And into that inoculating tray, I am going to put four of these little avocado pits in here. And then we will find out over the course of time how long it takes them to break down. So let's reassemble everything here and get them fed up. Okay, here we are at the feeding tray. And today, it is going to be cucumbers. You ever get that one branch, side branch, that goes, you know, somewhere in your garden that the rest of your stuff isn't going, and next thing you know, you've got a bunch of overripe cucumbers. So we're going to kind of do the same thing here. We've got two of them that are whole and two that are cut up. Fully expect the partials to be gone way before the whole ones. But in three weeks' time, considering how fast they consume cucumbers, we may never see them at all. So take a good look. Then here we are at the pre-harvest tray. And it has been my new process was to put some worm chow in here. That's what we're going to do. Somehow I think that perhaps the next check-in might not be the harvest. 
simply because those apples won't be done yet. I suppose I could always pick them out, but I, it won't hurt anything to leave it for another time. And then we have the worms that I picked out of the harvest tray here. Now let's go have a look and see when I put it on blue for it to dry out, what does it really look like? All right, there we go. And here goes the tray. Any worms that are still in here, you know, they will live in blue, they'll dive down. But I'm just gonna spread that over the top here so that that thin layer will be good to harvest. Hopefully the next time we check in on blue, we can do a pretty good size harvest. As you can tell, we're pretty close to the top over here. So it, it might actually be very necessary to do that. Let's sneak a look at Blue and see how he's doing with his last feeding. Okay, just peek in here. We put in a lot of bedding, but we're gonna peek and see if we can get a decent worm ball because we gave him a lot of food. We layered it with all the goo. Here we go. Yep. So the pureed food is definitely causing a riot with all these worms. Look at that. Good worms! But we're going to cover them back up because it's not time for the blue video. They need to get back to work and finish that food and bedding. Let's go and put the red wigglers back together. Quick look at the underside of the bin with the uh, sump here. Nice and wet. I'm not going to do anything with it this time. The bedding is still uh, plenty, plenty damp and still very, um, you know, it's not broken down yet. So let's get this thing stacked back up. There we are. Here's the layer with the avocado pits. Here's the, here's the layer that is just bedding layer. Another layer that's just bedding. The next layer with all of the feeding that we're getting. Uh, and here's the chow layer. Should we call it the chow layer or the pre-harvest layer? Put in the comments below, what do you think? Okay, and then that, that is it. Here we go. So if you like this uh, Red Wiggler series with the tower, I have a playlist that I will put right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.